Right. Now we're going to go to another session of creating value. This is value that some people just recently discovered during COVID. A lot of uh, events were canceled. And so some racers actually jumped into simulators and some had already been in simulators for a long time racing virtually. So Jim Beaver is the host of the Jim Beaver show. He is also one of the very first racers I know, real racer, track racer, who got into iRacing and virtual racing. Jim is one of the, I think there's only 20 eNASCAR franchise holders. He's one of them. And he's going to be discussing today with Joe Bricky from a VRS Virtual Racing School, uh, how to create value online and through sim racing. Jim, I'm going to hand it over. How you doing? I am. Uh, I'm doing good, buddy. Uh, life is uh, life is good. Can't complain. Right on. Right on. All so, right. yeah. So help us understand how do we create value for for brands and sponsors through online racing, and because it's a topic I don't know that much about, I'm going to exit the scene and I'm going to let you take over. It's all yours. Well, Appreciate it, uh, Alex, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. And I think, you know, one of the big things is, is, is a, quite like a lot of people tuning in now, um, I'm a professional off-road racer in the real world, and so I have a real-world racing program, and we've been able to apply that to the sim racing world. I also have a media company where we do quite a few things. So it's been really interesting to see, you know, kind of the differences in how you can leverage what you're doing in the real world and apply it to the sim racing world. And I'd like to introduce uh, Joe Bricky with Virtual Racing School, who uh, will we'll be talking through things. So don't know if you want to give us a little background on Virtual Racing School, Joe, before we get started and kind of what you do for them, and then we'll kind of get rolling. Yeah, sure. So Virtual Racing School, VRS, uh, has both software for uh, sim racing drivers, which is basically a telemetry that comes from everything they do on the track from their racing line to their braking inputs, et cetera. Plus the uh, coaches for VRS do tutorials to teach iRacers every single track. And they provide setups for the uh, tracks who use setups to help uh, allow the racers to go faster. And I'm the marketing director for VRS. So I know with me, and uh, I'm sure you can uh, chime in on this, and I got involved in, uh, you know, in, in sim racing, you know, with, with Jim Beaver Esports about a year to, you know, prior to the pandemic and we'd kind of started developing our roster of athletes and we had our eNASCAR franchise tell a lot of people once the pandemic hit it was like this entire industry the sim racing industry moved forward five years I feel like it almost pulled everything forward and we weren't prepared the infrastructure wasn't prepared but all of a sudden the world shut down and the only thing to do was sim race there was no, no real world racing and I feel like a lot of us all of a sudden it was just we're kind of thrushed and, and pushed into the limelight because, you know, it was just one of those where we weren't prepared for the mass influx of people and interest that sim racing got. And I don't know if VRS was very much the same way. Well, VRS had an interesting opportunity when it all happened. Uh, one of our top teams that we sponsor is the Quanda uh, eSports uh, e team. And they ended up training the entire Porsche factory team to, account, you know, basically acclimate them acclimatize them to sim racing and so and now flash forward to today now Kwan is actually running the sim sport uh for porsche so that's how the the you know the motorsports and the sim racing sports have kind of blended together since the since the pandemic started yeah you know and i, I know with with our team and we'll kind of get in i know we want to gear this more towards uh you know the real world racers kind of coming into sim racing and i think that's where virtual racing school is actually a phenomenal asset uh for a lot of people you know tuning in that uh, may just be starting to get involved in sim racing or maybe uh you know they they haven't quite yet but they've you know there's a lot of interest there um but i know with us you know it's been really interesting because we've got our real world race program and we've got some amazing corporate corporate partners and the sim racing thing thing through our team has kind of become a, a valuable asset because, you know, much like social media, when you're away from the track, social media, you know, serves its purpose to continue to get your story out, get the word out on what you're doing. Well, I think sim racing takes that 10 steps up because, you know, not only do you have social media, now you've got an entire race program that you can package and market towards your sponsors that are, you know, that are in the real world. And now, you know, they're getting the same value, if not more. I mean, I know, uh, you know, our eNASCAR numbers, I was just looking at some of them, we're averaging over 100,000 viewers per race, you know, and a lot of sim, you know, a, a lot of real world live streams don't, you know, don't pull in 100,000 viewers per race. So our partners that we've got there, you know, in our real world program, now all of a sudden, you know, on an off week, they're getting 100, 150,000 eyeballs on their product, on their logos, on their story, you know, that they're not, you know, that they're not getting, you know, 
you know, by anybody else. So to us as a real world program, our sim racing program has become infinitely valuable, uh, you know, to, uh, to continue to deliver, you know, ROI to our partners on off weeks when we're not racing. And, um, and speaking of off weeks, yeah, I think the, uh, some of the top motorsports racers, I mean, we work with Alex Pillow, uh, Roman Grosjean, and some uh, Sage Karam's one of our coaches or one of our uh, racers for Kwanda. But um, all of those gentlemen are different levels of uh, basically notoriety or fame, and, and they're picking up more followers online. Roman Grosjean's probably the most popular driver in IndyCar because of his massive social following. So it's one of the things I encourage uh, real racers to do is, is build your following on social media to increase your value. And, and uh, Alex Blow has done that, uh, Twitch. He started Twitch not that, you know, sometime during the pandemic. And he's up to, I don't know, 15,000 followers now. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's really important. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, along those lines with the sim racing and, and you know, it, it is a personal brand, it's it's really good because, you know, I take Connor Daly, who during the pandemic, he kind of started a Twitch channel and it became super popular, you know, and here's an IndyCar driver who people see race, you know, on the weekends and things like that, but they might not really know Connor, you know, obviously they've got a, a little bit of, you know, feedback into his life via social media, but now all of a sudden he goes sim racing and he invites everybody to his Twitch stream now people are tuning in and it's not the high pressure situation a lot of times when he's just having a fun race with friends things like that so they really get to know the driver's personality they get to know how he's like you know his jokes things like that so it just builds that personal branding you know so when he does go back to the track these fans follow him back and forth between the virtual world and the real world and so i've seen that with a lot of drivers being in awesome asset for them and their personal brand to be able to tell their story and get people attached to it because you know you can't necessarily do that on national tv you know during an indycar weekend yeah no they don't they, they don't really have that much interaction except for a handshake and a you know a picture but uh but yeah on the twitch channels and and, and twitch is like the real important one they get to know the drivers and they, then they build up that loyalty and that following with these people who actually get that interaction. I mean, they get to talk to them. I mean, Tony Kanan's doing it and Alex, you know, Alex said Alex and others are all doing it. And it's, it's a really good way to get your following growing and, and fan, yeah, like you said, fan loyalty. So definitely. Well, I've got a question for you. I mean, you know, talking about value and what sim racing brings to real world racers. I mean, obviously there's, you know, most of the tracks in the iRacing service are real world tracks. I know on the off-road side, you know, Cranon, I've had the opportunity to burn a ton of laps in a sim on Cranon and I've been to Cranon in the real world and it's scary how close they are. Um, you know, with VRS, you guys offer, you know what I mean? A, a schooling for that. How, how many real world drivers are you getting coming to VRS and coming to iRacing and sim racing strictly to get more lap time on, on, you know, on tracks that they haven't been to, or that they may need some work on. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point and a question. And what, what I see and what I've seen is the more the drivers get sim racing time on a track, uh, the better off they perform once they get to the real track. I mean, Roman Grosjean's doing uh doing little presentations every week or every track uh, week on, on the track he's about to race. And he's doing that in our factor two. And uh, Alex is doing a whole synopsis after the race, going through what happened during the race. But I think it's invaluable how much time you get on, uh, you get on the sim. And we actually, uh, Honda has their, you know, their big league simulator, but they bought equipment from us to get guys more time on the sims before they got them to the big sim because they you know they don't have two of them so yeah it's super important i think it's invaluable for for real racers to get that track time in the sim